Throughout the 52 years Harding has existed, preach the word has been the primary motive for the college's existence. The goal of the institution is to prepare men and women for greater service to God. The college was built upon that great foundation, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Twenty-three years ago, Harding's leaders saw a need for students to train further than the baccalaureate degree. At first, programs at the Searcy campus were expanded, but soon even this effort was not as broad as the pioneers wanted. In 1958, the Harding Graduate School of Religion was moved to Memphis. Now we can look back at the record of graduate training with a degree of pride to see that we have 428 graduates and 1,500 alumni. They're serving in 40 states and 20 foreign countries. Why did these individuals choose Harding Graduate School of Religion? Why has enrollment continued to climb? Because we have a purpose that gives direction. William Temple commented in a BBC broadcast during England's darkest days in World War II that worship alone can save the world. It's our intention to prepare leaders who will point others toward God and His Word as the norm for life. This will lead to the true fulfillment of the potentialities of persons and improve the fiber and quality of life of the home. It will strengthen the moral and religious foundations of communities and nations and point toward Christian solutions of the human problems in a technological civilization and prepare men for eternal life with God. But what is the Harding Graduate School of Religion doing in the lives of its students? Dr. Harold Hazelip, the dean of the institution, had this observation. Our 1975 graduates rated us 4.46 on a five-point scale in an evaluation of the helpfulness of our degree program as preparation for their ministry. Most of these men were already preaching, and they should be in good position to judge what is helpful in that work. I believe Harding Graduate School of Religion has the unique equipment to give the best preparation available today for preaching the Word. Schools of Religion point with pride to the various community services in which their students participate. Some are engaged in the ministry of singing, of teaching, of visitation, and of preaching. Some minister to the sick and some to the poor, while others minister to the suburbs or the inner city. But one important reason that's seldom mentioned for attending an academic institution is simply the ministry of study. Dr. Jack P. Lewis, professor of Bible and a true scholar in biblical studies, challenges his students to think of study as a ministry rendered in service to God. Lewis points out, never mind how brilliant he is, a man's judgment is only as good as his information. Many people seem to feel that study is one of the optional activities of preaching to be engaged in by a few individuals strange enough to enjoy it. Or, if not optional, at the best it's a necessary evil to which only a minimal amount of time should be devoted. Some vigorously resist learning anything new, and others seem to feel that depth of study endangers the soul. Our world is gripped as never before in a gigantic struggle for control of the minds of men. In this struggle, what will eventually win out? Will it be materialism, communism, Catholicism, some denominational system, or will it be the truth of God? What sort of world will tomorrow's world be? Our congregations are growing, but we're faced with a rapidly increasing world population which is expanding much more rapidly percentage-wise than is Christianity. Unless the trend is reversed and the advance of Christianity stepped up, the world of tomorrow will not be a Christian world. Coupled with the increase in world population, there's also a rapidly rising educational level of the world public, and especially of the American public. Forty years ago, the average community had few residents with an education beyond the high school level. But in our society today, the educational trend is upward, with no signs of leveling off. In pioneer days, any man could come out of the cornfield and start preaching. Great sacrifices were made and great service was rendered by these men, but the day has passed in America when the unprepared preacher can gain a significant hearing. Paul said, We struggle to take every thought captive to obey Christ in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5. We in the church cannot afford to write off as a total loss the educated segment of our population. 
Long ago, the writer Bacon aptly said, Let no man out of a weak conceit of sobriety or an ill-applied moderation think or maintain that a man can search too far or be too well studied in the book of God's Word or in the book of God's works. Professor Lewis of the graduate school added this analogy. Someone has compared studying and preaching to putting water into a tank. As studying, you're filling the tank with a one-inch pipe. When speaking, you're letting it out with a a ten-inch pipe. A well-prepared sermon may take as much as 20 hours in its preparation. The preacher needs to plan a life which involves a ministry of study. The minister needs a good base, and he needs good tools for ongoing study. The biblical text is the Word of God and is the ultimate source to which one must turn in his quest for religious certainty. Christian doctrine, church history, counseling, communications, and church growth are related fields of importance for the person who plans a lifetime of preaching or teaching God's Word. Dr. Thomas Warren, professor of Christian doctrine, says, Sometimes young men say, I'm just planning to preach. I don't need graduate study. Persons who hold such a view regard formal Bible training as unnecessary. Of course, there are many great gospel preachers who have not had formal training. But it is necessary for one to get training if he is to do the job which the Lord expects. Undoubtedly, even those with little formal training would recommend young men to acquire a sound religious education. I studied because I saw the need to do so in order to be able to meet some of the challenges that were facing us as God's people. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 teaches that we must be prepared to give a defense to anyone who asks us a reason for the hope that is within us. And Jude, verse 3, instructs us that we should contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. The Graduate School of Religion has assembled an experienced and knowledgeable faculty dedicated to serving God. They've committed themselves to the training of ministers for the Lord's work. There's close rapport between faculty and students. This rapport contributes to a student's motivation to develop his abilities to their ultimate potential. The L.M. Graves Library is one of the most fully equipped graduate Bible libraries in the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ. The library contains more than 50,000 volumes and subscribes to more than 400 periodicals. Private rooms provide students with the opportunity for preparation needed in graduate study. Students and faculty alike use the Graves Library. Faculty members spend many hours preparing to teach their classes. But is there a way to choose and get the most out of graduate education and religion? Dr. Bill Flatt, teacher and registrar for the Harding Graduate School, has summarized an article by Andre Bastanabe, which suggests a student should ask at least the following eight questions. First, is the school faithful to the Orthodox Christian faith? This certainly should be a valid point for students of the Restoration Movement because of our emphasis upon the restoration of the New Testament Church according to specifications in the inspired Bible. Some students in Churches of Christ are now saying that they should go to liberal theological schools for all of their graduate work in order to find out what the opposition is saying. We believe that a better approach is to go to one of our Brotherhood graduate schools prior to any work one might do toward a doctorate at some other school. This additional study with brethren who share your convictions will help ground you in the faith and will help give you answers to opposing views. Second, does the school provide a solid, basic biblical education? A solid biblical education is an absolute essential for ministers who believe in the restoration of New Testament Christianity. Restoration is not possible without the Bible. This principle applies to all ministers, even to those whose primary work is not in the pulpit. Our faith is grounded in the Word of God. Solutions to problems must be grounded also in the Word of God. Thus, preachers, teachers, missionaries, counselors, religious educators, chaplains, and all other ministers turn to the Word of God for the foundations of their ministry. Third, is the curriculum designed to help the student discover and perfect his spiritual gift? By spiritual gift, we don't mean miraculous skills, but native abilities possessed by each student. In addition to a solid biblical base, the student needs appropriate skills for his ministry, whether these be the skills in homiletics for preaching, personal work techniques, 
teaching methods, missionary methods, methods for youth work, or other specific skills. The Harding Graduate School of Religion offers a core curriculum designed to introduce the student to various avenues of ministry and allows for more than 30 hours of electives in the Master of Theology curriculum, permitting the student to center in on his particular area of concern. Fourth, is the school in touch with the current outlook in the churches and the Christian community? The minister needs to know not only the unchanging, but the changing. Not only the Bible which does not change, but also the current situation in which you'll find himself as he goes out to work in the congregations and communities throughout the world. The Harding Graduate School of Religion has courses in the Bible, biblical languages, church history from the first century to the present, Christian doctrine, apologetics, and practical areas. Fifth, does the school provide adequate housing? The Harding Graduate School of Religion has 23 apartments for married students and 10 rooms for single students on campus. Now, this is not enough to meet the need of all of our graduate students who are married. It does, however, help 23 students each semester. The Harding Graduate School keeps a list of available reasonably priced apartments off campus and tries in every way to help all students find adequate housing. Sixth. Is the school suffering from power struggles, either internally or externally, with its church group? Well, there are always some creative differences of opinions on faculties. It seems to be a necessary part of graduate education to examine different positions and to learn various methodologies to use in dealing with numerous attacks made upon the Christian faith. While this is an ongoing process at the Harding Graduate School, there's still a sense of unity in the faculty and staff and the Brotherhood a unity based upon a commonly held belief in the inspiration and authority of the Bible and the oneness of the church, the atoning blood of Jesus and the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, in the hope of eternal life through obedient faith in Jesus Christ and in all other principles taught in the Bible by precept or through example. Seventh, is the school well attended and in demand? The enrollment figures over the years give an idea of what other prospective students have thought about the school. It's also a good idea for prospective students to talk with students who are currently attending the school. Enrollment in the Harding Graduate School of Religion has continued in an upward trend for the seven-year period from 1969 to 1975. Eighth, what kind of graduate is produced by the school? This guideline for prospective students is perhaps the most important one. A school is known by the student it produces. Generally speaking, graduates of the school tell the story of what the school is actually doing in its work of preparing men to serve. Graduates of the Harding Graduate School of Religion are now serving the Lord in 40 states and 20 foreign countries. The Harding Graduate School is glad for prospective students to look at the 428 students who have graduated and to evaluate the school in terms of the work these men are doing. This guideline was advanced by Jesus himself when he said, Good fruit comes from good trees. Many who live within driving distance of Memphis and want to further their preparation find it possible to enroll for classes one day a week. A few classes are scheduled on an alternate week basis. Full-time students may enroll for a class or more each school day, depending on their work schedule. Al Meeks, a recent graduate, said, Recognizing the need for further education, I came to Harding Graduate School of Religion planning to do only one year of study. However, I found the courses so practical and so challenging that I completed my third year and then stayed one more. Obviously, I believe in opportunities such as this for concentrated study in Bible and related areas. Christian colleges have become the usual place for preacher preparation. Harding's Graduate School of Religion proposes to build upon this excellent training one step further to meet today's challenges, but still under the guidance of a qualified faculty who will help in the formation of spirituality through word and example. We encourage you to do further study at the Harding Graduate School of Religion for the most pressing and important work on earth, the work of preaching and teaching the gospel of Christ.